Hi, my name is Rohan Duper, and you're watching MAD. Trying to teach the choreography to the company was really challenging for sure. It was a two and a half week process of developing the choreography and teaching it and rehearsing it online. We did have a couple days where we got to meet up in a park and do some socially distant mask on rehearsing, which was really, really useful to get a sense of, you know, how does it actually work with all the bodies in space at the same time. The um, wrist shop song is one that was really interesting to us as Frog in Hand because Frog in Hand is a dance theater company. So while we do a lot of contemporary dance and just like regular choreography, uh, that one was interesting because we got to make it more of a of a theater piece as well with more acting, more character work in there. Um, so Caitlin Sabled was our choreographer for that one. And um, she really walked us through a lot of character beats and intentions and really focused more on making it more of like a scene or a mini play as opposed to a dance. Chamak Cello was really just straight up a dance number. It was a lot of fun. Um, another company member, McKenna, she choreographed that one and she has a strong hip hop background. So we got to draw on her experience doing that. And then for Bad To Me's Fever, that one was really playing back and forth with the Bollywood song and the disco song and finding that, you know, or having a good time in both worlds, but they're a little bit different. Um, and the inspiration came from, you know, finding a way to celebrate both versions together. Finding a way to um, navigate the South Asian cultural implications of Bollywood along with the other styles we were using was something that we were having a lot of conversations about as a company, um, especially because I'm the only South Asian member of the company. Um, I do personally have um, a lengthy Bollywood training background, um, but not everyone else did. So we did a lot of um, research and a lot of discussion. We watched a lot of videos just so that we understood what some of those um, cultural and traditional derivatives of the style of Bollywood are and where they come from. Um, and then we just basically wanted to incorporate that and treat it as a regular frog in hand dance theater process. So it was more along the lines of we're incorporating a cultural celebration of the South Asian implications of Bollywood into what frog in hand's theater making practices already are. And then, of course, everyone not having done Bollywood before, uh, we started off our process with just learning a few counts of eight of strictly Bollywood movement and really fine tuning different details within that, like with the hands, with the looks, with the heads, um, just so that everyone had that already introduced into their body before we started teaching each piece individually. <laughs> started rehearsing um, maybe about five weeks. We filmed on Zoom for many, many days. And it was it was interesting at first trying to mirror choreography and like trying to figure out like which side your body moves and and it's like sometimes the music would be out of sync because of the lag from Zoom. So there were a few like technological challenges there. But the amazing thing about Zoom is that as we're doing right now, we're recording. So what we would do is we would record every a rehearsal and we would post it like on Google Drive where all of the company members were able to look back and review in their own time and then we had like the few socially distanced in-person rehearsals um, which kind of helped with the spacing and kind of finalize everything together so that was really nice. You know in the end it was it was great and when we arrived we just had to make a few adjustments but of course yeah what are artists if not resilient? especially in this time. I've been in contact with Colleen throughout a lot of the back and forth over the past um, 
year or so with uh, trying to get a collaboration going with Monstrogity. So it's been really lovely to feel that um, desire to have us involved, which was very exciting for it to finally come come to fruition. And logistically, everything ran so smoothly from like the communication to um, the uh, discussion about what needed to happen creatively. On top of that, just like I love the sense of community that Monstrosity fosters within not just like the local arts community, but also focusing on providing a platform for South Asian artists as well and to invite other artists who don't necessarily identify within that culture to um, lend their voices in that aspect. This festival was good for me because it opened my eyes to the infinite possibilities of being an artist in this local community within South Asian culture. I had a really great time watching the live stream on the Facebook page, like seeing people who fall within more traditional Indian dance forms and then seeing some people who work more within fusion, like with heels or hip hop and whacking. It was just like wonderful, so much fun. I was watching it with my family at home and um, just everything was so different and everything was really well paced in terms of like, you know, I was engaged the entire time, even though it was on this digital platform. The thing with the digital performance is that there's a sense of permanence with it. Whereas when it's live, you do it, then it's done and, and no one really sees it again. So it's nice that it's out there and it was received with that much um, positivity. I'm gonna put it on.